Good morning everybody. It is Monday morning, the 1st of June. Another month um, has started and we're going to meet together this morning just to do what we've been doing these last number of weeks during lockdown, just to read God's Word together. We are on Acts chapter 22 this morning, so let's read this together um, and hear God's Word. This is Paul speaking. Brothers and esteemed fathers, Paul said, Listen to me as I offer my defence. When they heard him speaking in their own language, the silence was even greater. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, and I was brought up and educated there in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. As a student, I was carefully trained in our Jewish laws and customs. I became very zealous to honour God in everything I did, just like all of you today. And I persecuted the followers of the way, hounding some to death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. The high priest and the whole council of elders can testify that this is so. For I received letters from them to our Jewish brothers in Damascus, authorising me to bring the Christians from there to Jerusalem in chains, in chains to be punished. As I was on the road approaching Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone down around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus the Nazarene, the one you are persecuting. The people with me saw the light but didn't understand the voice speaking to me. I asked, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord told me, get up and go into Damascus, and there you'll be told everything that you are to do. I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted to the law and well regarded by all the Jews in Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And at that very moment, I could see him. Then he told me, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to, seek, and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptised. Have your sins washed away and be call and be and by calling on the name of the Lord. After I returned into Jerusalem, I was praying in the temple, and I fell into a trance. I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, Hurry, leave Jerusalem, for the people here would accept your authority about me. But Lord, I argued, they certainly know that in every synagogue. I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And I was in complete agreement with your witnesses, uh, Stephen, when your witness Stephen was killed. I stood by and kept the coats they took off them when they stoned him. But the Lord said to me, Go, and I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened until Paul said that word. And when they all, then they all began to shout, Away with such a fellow! He isn't fit to live. They yelled, threw off their coats and tossed handfuls of dust into the air. The commander brought Paul inside and ordered him lashed with whips to make him confess his crime. He wanted to find out why the crowd had come, become so furious. When they tied Paul down to lash him, Paul said to the officer standing there, Is it legal for you to whip a Roman citizen who hasn't, hasn't even been tried? When the officer heard this, he went to the commander and asked, What are you doing? This man is a Roman citizen. So the commander went over and asked Paul, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I certainly am, Paul replied. I am too, the commander muttered, and it cost me plenty. Paul answered, I am a citizen by birth. The soldiers who were about to interrogate Paul quickly withdrew when they heard he was a Roman citizen. And the commander was frightened because he had ordered him bound and whipped. The next day the commander ordered the leading priests into session with the Jewish high council. 
He wanted to find out what trouble, what the trouble was all about. So he released Paul to have him stand before them. Amen. Another interesting part in Paul's story. Interesting because we learn a little bit about the Roman Empire. How if you were a true citizen, how you had more rights than others. But also as you see Paul standing there bravely, boldly, as he declares, um, I suppose you, one way you could say his testimony to the people. And even whenever they start to give off and, and want him killed, how he still stands firm and he doesn't give up. It reminds us of what I was talking about yesterday, that we do everything, not in our own strength, but in the strength of God. Because I'm sure Paul didn't himself have the fortitude, the strength, the character, the, 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 the wherewithal just to stand there on his own strength. He couldn't have. It was more than what anyone could bear. But he stood there in the strength that God gave him through his Holy Spirit. That's a great reminder to us that God is with us in every circumstance. Whether it be um, something minor or whether in our eyes it's something major. God is always there with us. So we start another month today. Um, it's another month whenever things will change. In part, certain parts of the country lockdown is starting to lift today. Um, certainly with ourselves in Northern Ireland things aren't really changing all that much. Yes, some people go back to work, some people don't, depending on what the situation is. It's going to be hard still. But we have the strength of God in us. We have God with us through every step of the way. So let's just ask him to continue to be with us in all that lies about. And whatever challenges you face today, um, challenges maybe from a work point of view, from a personal point of view, uh, from family, know that God is with you, looking after you, supporting you, guiding you through all of that. So let's pray together. Lord, again, thank you uh, that we come to you on this and our glorious Monday morning uh, and that we have you with us. Lord, thank you that we are not alone, that we don't have to face life alone, that we have you with us all the time, giving us your strength, your peace and comfort. Lord, that's the example that we see from Paul as he faced major opposition. And Lord, today we know we can draw on that same strength from you. So help us, Lord, just to rely upon you. Help us to give every situation over to you, Lord, that, that we don't try and carry it by ourselves, but that rather we surrender it to you so that you can carry us through that, uh, knowing that your arms are around us. Lord, for those who have to go to work today, please protect them. For those who continue to stay at home, give them peace as I'm sure they worry about jobs and what, what's going to happen in the future. For those with children at home as they continue to homeschool them, Lord, just give them patience and give them wisdom and insight as to best how to best do that. And for our children and young people, Lord, it's so frustrating for them at this time. So just be with them. Give them patience. Give them a sense of responsibility as well as they realise that what they do, um, the same as the rest of us, ripples through everyone. So Lord, help us always to be looking out for those who are around us and to act in that responsible way. Lord, thank you. And go with us this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Folks, I pray that at the start of this week, that it be um, a week where you would know God's peace and God's blessing. Uh, a week that you would really tap into the strength of God which is there and know him carrying you through. So for this week, take care and God bless. See you tomorrow.